Okay guys, welcome to uh, the next part of my hot rod tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do now is continue this block out from uh, a very rough early stage and continue to add more detail. And you can see here I uh, isolated the first part we're going to work on, that is um, the body, the, the carriage in which the people sit. Um, this is not a very difficult shape. and. Um, well, mostly for car modeling, if I tell people how to start, if they ask me, should I start from a box or should I start from a plane, I usually tell them, go for a plane. You can never get the same um, type of flowing body lines when you start from a box. That doesn't mean it's not going to work, but it's a lot harder to get it to work. But in this case, it's, it's an exception because um, this isn't a car body in the pure sense. Um, it's not like most cars I do, I do because um, the wheel arches are not in this specific uh, piece of car body. Uh, it's just a, a lot simpler shape and I can get away with starting from a box here. Now what I'm going to do is um, just change the shape, add more detail in here to get a uh, smooth flowing lines in here. I'm still not entirely um, set on if this is going to turn into the low poly or the high poly. First I'm going to create a better base mesh and from that I will then later create the actual high poly and the actual low poly mesh. Um, why am I doing it like this? Well because for for flowing car body parts you really just want the same type of flowing neat uh, decent body geometry before uh, for, for anything for sub D or for low poly it doesn't matter it just has to be a good poly flow you have to get in there. And you can see I'm just adding polygons by um, simply chamfering and uh, connecting edges here. Uh, also I'm not really looking at my reference much here because well, as far as I noticed these uh, these bodies for these hot rods there isn't really some sort of standard which they all stick to. A lot of them are different even though most of these are T bucket hot rods based on 4T models. Uh, most of them are uh, are just like custom kits made out of fiberglass by some company so they really differ a lot. Some have square undersides like this one or well, some have round undersides. I don't really like the uh, the square uh, underside type so I'm gonna go for the uh, for the round one and just basically pretty much gonna turn this into my own personalized what I like best in a, in a hot rod thing which seems to be what building a hot rod in real life is also about just creating something something unique. I mean I don't think I've ever seen two hot rods on my reference that look the same so pretty much gonna try and do the same thing here. Um, you can see me add a, a chamfer here a little problem if I slide uh, connect I'm sorry if I slide here they move in opposite directions that's because of the triangulation what you need to do then is just um, is just leave them in the middle and move them manually afterwards um, just moving the points around a little bit also I created this body from the start with um, decent loops in there so I can easily use ring selections and connects to add more uh, geometry in there for me to work from. As you can see here just I'm doing another uh, ring selection and continuing from there. I'm not actually having this loop run through to the uh, underside of my um, my geometry here. Why? Because the underside is a part you won't see so much and I don't need to add so much detail in there. A much more important part is this corner. I'm looking at her right, he right here. You'll be seeing a lot of this and it's really a place that will catch a lot of specular and uh, and reflections. So I really want that part to be um, to model really smoothly with good pulley flow to uh, to catch the reflections. Because you know that's, that's something you don't always think about um, but if you're modeling a car having good specular reflection there is one thing but actual cube map reflections really require uh, a bit more from your geometry. It, the edges really have to flow well and in a, a logical and well laid out way. So I'm just adding more here because I don't think I'll be able to get away with uh, so little. Just tweaking the points about that's really important if you're doing a car body even though this is a simpler example of it you really want to look at the thing from all sides like I'm doing here I'm just turning around looking at it eyeballing how I should move uh, the polygons around and just making tiny tweaks that can make all the difference in the end so I decided here I need more verts to move things around 
And something I frequently do when making a car body, you noticed me having a little bit of a problem here for getting it. I hit the uh, Shift X hotkey. And what the Shift X hotkey does is, um, you can see on the right, there is a constraints uh, part in my interface. It has a none, edge, face, and normal. And just what I was talking about, it should be looking at it. You saw a jump from none to edge. That means I hit Shift X. And that means if I move my points, they are constrained to move on the edges that they are attached to. So that means I can never really um, break up my geometry too much by going outside of the existing edges. This is really good if you want to make, um, if you want to add more detail into a certain section and you don't want to spend too much time tweaking. I mean, I really switch between edge constraint and no constraint mode all the time, depending on how my tweaks are. But just try it out. Edge constraint mode can be handy when you just uh, when you're moving points across a part there. For example, that that middle part at the uh, at the top. When I move that up, I really had to use edge constraint to make sure I don't have to uh, change it too much. Um, so just some more tweaking here. That try I have here at that corner, um, I'm really not that happy about it yet, so it's probably going to change a bit. But it's it's a difficult part because it just pretty much turns around there. I'm also giving it this uh, sort of turning geometry around it there because there's an edge. It sort of loops around the entire top of uh, the body. Here I decided I want to add um, another edge over there. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, these cars have like a little door in the sides and I decided I want to uh, model this door in there also perhaps to be able to open it up later. So just moving the uh, the edges around a bit. Checking things from all sides again just to make sure everything is smooth. The poly flow isn't optimal on this body yet. You can see that the uh, the way the edges are spaced out along the side isn't entirely equal, and probably going to change this um, the course of working on this thing. You just saw me change the smoothing groups. I changed these smoothing groups because it just looks neater if you pay some attention to them from the start. So everything has the same smoothing group except the front part, and changing these smoothing groups also allows me to to sort of judge the shading a little bit. It showed me that not everything is correct at that part there, so the verts need to be tweaked a bit more. Yeah, and then I noticed I moved them around a bit with the uh, edge constraints on. I have to turn them off. A tricky part that needs some tweaking. This sort of tweaking to get the best possible pulley flow is uh, something really you need to get a bit of a feel for by just doing it over and over and over. Especially in cars, good pulley flow is, is what it's all about. And um, even though this is not a difficult example, it still requires quite some detail uh, detail attention. So right here, I want that bottom part to be a bit smoother. And these parts I need to move separately on all three dimensions, so I'm doing these in uh, a couple of separate moves. First, all of these on the uh, X and Y axes. And I can see this one needs a little bit more tweaking, that's not correct yet. That one also needs some tweaking. What I'm really looking for here is that my lines of my car just flow into each other, that there are no like hidden jolts or bends in the uh, in the connection of the edges. really want them to flow onto each other. And I talked about the spread and spacing of my polygons. Here I'm just changing that a little bit so they are spaced out more evenly, especially at the back where I have this uh, flowing arc. So I'm looking at this door from this car and you can see that the bottom corners are rounded. I want to get that effect into my car as well. So I'm just uh, going to use a little trick for that. I'll first unhide everything and um, 
Just take a look and see how it sits on the uh, chassis. And yeah, there we go. We can continue like this. I'm uh, straightening out these parts because, well, the door is obviously straight, so I need to have my edges straight as well. Scaling can also help to straighten something out. And you can see this is why I rotated the car body because uh, if I want to straighten things, I need my entire uh, object to be aligned with the axes. I'm doing an inset there, but that's not really working, so I need to make it a little bit smaller. If I target well these over there, now I have the uh, supporting vertices to create my uh, chamfered bottom parts from. Move these up a little bit, but I need to move them along edge constraints so they don't move outside of the uh, the plane I'm working in. Move these a little bit. I move these out to give my vert some breathing space there. I'm chamfering these both just to give them a little bit more of a, a rounded feel. Keep in mind this is all just uh, still the early stages and um, basically just trying to add more detail without being too sure if I'll keep it or not. So now I need to set my smoothing groups correct there and you can see that the part I added does kill the smoothing a little bit there. I mean it doesn't look as, as good as um, it doesn't look as good as it should. So I'm removing some of these edges and I'm going to uh, add some geometry there like that if I connect these edges I don't have these uh, tries that influence the shading there because I want my shading to run straight down and if I have these diagonal edges running there my shading will be influenced by that and it won't look as good as it should now here I am adding tries why it doesn't matter it's a it's a flat part it's not a bad thing if you have tries there so there we go turn into quads nicely. I'm gonna add a another edge loop here like so and uh, you can guess the reason for that that is uh, once I have it tweaked into place so that I can connect it with those edges over there. There we go now we have our edges uh, running nicely through and you can see I'm turning all these tries into quads it's always better to have all quads for uh, for when you're creating hard surface subdivision geometry. Doing the same thing here, adding uh, some more edges so I can connect these and turn it, everything into all quads. There we go. That should look a bit better. These need to be moved outside. I'm not happy with the curve there. It needs to be moved a little bit like that. There we go. That looks a lot better. Obviously those need to be moved too so we prevent having a sort of dent in there and talking about those bends and uh, little jolts we have in our edges I need to move those points as well again I'm checking things by rotating around and just seeing if the shading uh, looks good and we can see here yeah I pretty much fixed the shading up at the bottom down there that's looking pretty good. Checking out my reference again. I'm pretty happy with this part so far. I like where this is going. So uh, back into the geometry. I'm gonna select these parts. I'm looking for some more reference on doors, just uh, so I know what I'm doing. You see most of these have like a sort of thick line running at uh, at the edges where the door is and I want to try and add that in there as well. But for the moment I'm just going to leave that and tweak the top a bit more since as I said I'm not entirely sure that everything I'm creating here such as door I'm going to keep for later on. So uh, for the moment I'm just moving those verts up and down a little bit.
And also, you might notice that um, sometimes in my videos, there's a little pop-up uh, from Winamp that shows the music I'm listening to. I sort of deliberately kept those in there because um, the music is actually an important part of my workflow. Uh, I really try to listen to music that motivates me and keeps me in the mood for working on this thing. And the music I listen to pretty much all the time when working on this uh, Hot Rod is the Brutal Legend soundtrack, which is just all metal tracks. I'm not a big metalhead or anything, but it helps to keep me in, in the mood for working on this uh, metal-inspired Hot Rod. So you might want to try that out too. Find some music that suits the project you're working on and um, yeah, see if it motivates you even more. So there we go, a little pause there. That's probably me just uh, fiddling with music or something. Connecting these parts, and uh, because as I said, that part's bothering me a little bit since um, there's a few tries there, and I think I need to be able to sort that out better. There we go. This is a flat part, so it's not really a problem if I have some tries there. I'm just connecting these together, I have some quads move them about, straighten those edges out just to make it a little bit tidier. Yep, and connect those up. And I'm selecting this entire loop. Why? Because uh, when looking at my reference there's this little thick band running around the top of the uh, the body. I want to try and add that in there too. So I'm um, adding another loop there that provides me with uh, the edges I need to create the uh, the band that runs around the top. I'm just tweaking the positions a little bit because I felt that it was getting a little bit too slim there at the top. Now I'm doing a ring selection and. Um, that ring selection, I convert a ring selection to polygons by control clicking on the polygon uh, button and I'm just going to bevel that part over there. See, that's the sort of thing I was th talking about, this, uh, this little bevel thing that comes out of there. Most of the time it looks pretty good, so I'm sort of happy with these settings. I'm going to hit OK. And uh, I'm hitting Grow. Why? Because I can quickly select all parts of that bevel thing running around there and change the smoothing group on it. There you go, that's what I was talking about. Now there was a small problem I noticed right away is that um, the, the edges there were running a little bit crooked and I don't like crooked edges in my mesh so I'm tweaking those out right away. And for the Biggest part of it that looks okay. All right, so this uh, this body part it's looking a lot more polished and finished compared to uh, the rest of the car. Um, right now, I'm pretty much thinking what I should tackle next, and I think the next thing on my list will be uh, the car's frame. The frame is an important part since pretty much everything is attached to it. So uh, I'm just going to hide everything unselected and it's just a little stupid problem I have with Camtasia. If Camtasia is recording I don't see the quad menus so sometimes you'll see me fighting with them. So there we go. Time to tackle the frame. Um, the front is a lot more rounded so I'm going to uh, chamfer that round front part and move the edges about a bit so I don't have a, a sharp pointy end but a nicely rounded end part. Um, I'm connecting those verts to prevent uh, having n-gons like I don't know ten-sided polygons I prefer quads and tries so those are nicely connected and yeah that's looking better now I need to find some pics of the uh, frame here we go back to um, that page I was talking about the guy building the hot rod what I see here is the uh, the front leaf spring blades those are um, front suspension of a hot rod is a pretty primitive and simple system. There's uh, a few parts. I think I'll be zooming in on them here, not sure. No, I'll be creating the uh, the leaf springs first. Well, 
Uh, a suspension is always built out of two primitive parts. Those are shocks, which absor absorb the shocks, and those are springs, which will make uh, the wheels bounce back when they hit the ground uh, hard. And um, the springs in this case are not the uh, helix type springs you're used to, but they are, um, how would I say this? They're metal plates, uh, a few of them on top of each other, and the top ones, in this case the top ones, sometimes the bottom ones, the top ones are less, are shorter than um, the bottom ones. They're stacked on top of each other, you can see it here, I'm creating a second part. And the reason I'm uh, adding these segments in there is because these blade, these um, these metal plates, they're bent. So I need some segments to be able to bend them. So now I'm creating the third part here. Looking at my reference, I pretty much uh, judged them at three uh, leaves, leaf springs. Since that's how this system is called, leaf springs. So I'll move them a little bit tighter together. There we go. I like that. And what I'm going to do now is add a bend modifier to bend them. And you see, you need to tweak the settings a little bit. Uh, there we go. No, that's still not correct. 90 degrees. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. This sort of bend. Why am I using a bend modifier here? Because then I can really easily control the bend. And it's just way easier than uh, modeling that bend in there. So that's uh, 3D Studio Max modifiers to the rescue. Um, so this one's in the correct position. Now I need to add some supporting parts around it. Uh, I just gotta take a look at my reference again. Well, no, I, I, I can just do it without. There's uh, two boxes, metal parts, two retaining plates at the top and at the bottom. And uh, these plates hold the springs in place. See, there's one at the bottom. I'm just tweaking this. Out. Yeah, there we go. Look at my reference again. And I'm pretty much basing myself on the one I saw on the uh, the web page. These are all a little bit different. They have um, they have vertical plates, while I want the plates to be horizontal. Yeah, like here. You can see there's two plates. And they're held together with four nuts. And I just want to use the same system. So here's one plate. And I'm just going to duplicate that plate on top. Yeah, there we go. And I want it to be a little bit different in size. There we go. Yep, like that. And the bottom plate is actually connected to the frame, and the top plate is just there to clamp the uh, the springs into place. So reduce the number of sides on a cylinder and I'm actually creating cylinders here which will represent the uh, the nuts that secure the two plates together converting them to polygon deleting the insides and now I'm just uh, duplicating the geometry and you can see you can see me copy the um, the position and paste it in again. What I'm doing here, and I do this trick quite a lot, is I copy the position of um, a symmetrical part on one side and paste the invert, the inverse of that number. So in this case uh, it was minus 2.4. I just copied 2.4. It was, it was a more complicated number, just as an example. And I paste it on the other side and I immediately have my part on the other side without having to go through the trouble of using uh, a symmetry or a mirror. It's really the fastest way to create um, a part exactly mirrored or copied over the zero axis. So there we go. That's the start of my front suspension. I really choose to to make this system because it's really interesting to look at. I mean you have these uh, these metal parts under tension, you have those two plates retaining it. I think it's a it's a cool mechanical part to look at. Really want my uh my ride to have this detail. What I'm doing now is linking everything together with a link tool. Why is that? Because if I rotate the frame, so everything moves along. And I remember that the rotation I want here is minus 3.5. There we go. That's in the correct position. That's how I like it. Need to change it a little bit more. There we go.
just typing in some values to get this in the correct position. 3.3 seems about right. And the front axle needs to be moved also. I need to attach everything to the front axle. So if I move the front axle, all the real life attachments move along with it. There we go. That looks a lot better. Yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. Alright, now that I have that, I'm gonna have to add some more details. And, um,. I'm going to tackle this uh, this front axle part. Um, I just want to play with the uh, subdivisions here, see if I can get a little bit smoother. But yeah, looking at this, I need to tweak things a little bit more. Yeah, I just try a little dip in the center there, but that's not working so well. Just looking at all sides, I'm sort of contemplating what am I going to do with this part? What what do I need to do to take this from its blockout stage to a more usable, more defined uh, form? And I'm uh, uh, still thinking about it. These blades need to be moved a little bit so they don't uh, stick into the uh, into the retaining plates the entire front axle needs to be moved a bit and I'm looking at this guy's axle you can see some connecting parts on there, the brakes and everything, I still need to model those as well mm. guess what I'm gonna do now is create the um, brackets that will be attached to the front axle and those brackets will attach to those leaf springs you see there so in a sense this is the piece that connects the front axle to the actual springs so I need to reduce segments on this box start simple don't go too complex that seems to be in the right position and this is going to be some simple modeling uh, I don't want to spend too much effort into creating some simple brackets. I mean, you can completely lo lose yourself in details like this, um, but I don't really see the point. I mean, people will spend less than a millisecond glancing over this, so if it looks sort of acceptable, uh, looks like it like like it could work, and like you spent some time on it and didn't omit it, then then it's fine. Um, I'm creating a cylinder here because. Obviously, if these uh, these parts are attached to the suspension, then they will rotate. Uh, one side of the suspension can be up higher than the other, so these parts will want to rotate on these brackets. So that's why I'm adding a cylinder, so things can rotate there. I'm keeping these parts really uh, low poly and blocky just to make sure I put them there, and. Uh, I can actually take those details further in a further detailing stage. Checking out this page more, seeing if there's some more info on those brackets on there because I'm still not entirely sure how I should uh, handle all these parts. Looking at the rear suspension here, thinking how I should uh, should approach those. Looking at my reference also, it's important to just check different sources I mean you can get some new insights from looking at a different uh, some different pictures yeah and this guy is this guy has it done differently you can see the uh, the shocks there and that's what I'm gonna create next the shocks are a really interesting part I especially like them on uh, on that picture with the black hot rod there they really look pretty cool like all angled jacked up high I want the exact same uh, shocks on my hot rod. You can see I'm just mixing and matching the more interesting parts from all different references to create my own uh, preferred hot rod. I'm creating a, a piston construction between these two parts. You have the two ends and in between there's a piston which is uh, which has 
I don't know, gas in there, a spring perhaps. Um, they might be oil shocks also. And they uh, absorb the shocks the car will uh, encounter when it drives on the road. So I'm duplicating that part of the cylinder again, increasing the radius, and giving it some more segments to uh, to create the piston from. There we go, a very simple low poly piston. This one's really not so detailed because I'm pretty sure I'm creating the low poly parts here first. So what I have in mind here when I'm creating this is I'm not going to do a high poly for every single part. Um, I'm thinking these parts are so small you probably won't have any benefit from actually going in and creating a, uh, a high poly for these parts. So I'm just creating the low poly straight away. That's why I'm having a four-sided center and six-sided uh, for the other cylinders. It's a small part also. So there we go. I have my uh, shock piston created. I'm moving this pivot around because I want to rotate it over the, uh, the base part. There we go, using snapping to align it to the cylinder. and now I'm going to move it into place. What I can see here is it's not long enough so I really need to uh, lengthen it a little bit and I want that part to be a bit longer also so the shocks have more travel move this into position, rotate them and now I need to create the uh, the brackets and attachments that I can use to connect this uh, shock to the frame and to the front axle. Back to my reference. You can see on the frame there are these uh, protruding metal bar parts which connect to the pistons. I think it's a, it's a really interesting construction and I wanna wanna match that. Just going through my referencing, if there's any other interesting pictures of this subject there. A lot of it is just engines and general cars. There's only a few pictures that were really good for basing my suspension on. Uh, you'll notice that too, you'll, you'll come back to good reference a lot. I mean, good reference goes a long way, so um, make sure you have plenty of it. Um, judging things from all sides and I'm gonna need a, another spline here as the attachment for that shock to the frame and you see I created a line with uh, three points and the, you can see at the top it's subdivided there, that's because I want to move that point forward so I can attach it over there to that, well I can make it look like it's attached to that uh, shock. This part needs to be moved in line with that one, there we go, so it looks nice and straight. It needs to be moved up so it's all nicely aligned. And uh, I'll move this one forward a little bit. Angles are interesting, not everything is a straight 90 degrees onto each other so I'm just adding some angles um, that part is still too sharp so I'm probably gonna fill it or chamfer it and yeah there we go I'm gonna use a chamfer like so oh, it looks a lot better nicely rounded Changing into an edit pulley. Why? So I can delete the insides of this mesh, the insides which you will never see and which only add useless tries and pulleys. Yeah, so just looking at it from all sides, see if I'm happy with this shape, and, and I, I think I am. There we go, deleted those parts. And now I'm just going to attach that, um, that piece to the frame so it gets mirrored to the other side and I don't have to worry about creating two copies of it. It's always easier to uh, attach new symmetrical geometry to uh, an existing mirrored object so you don't have to go through the trouble of adding more symmetry modifiers or doing more 
mirror operations which can result in uh, in some headache yeah so here's a warning don't use mirror too often because it might result in problems uh, mirror actually inverts the scale on your object which is not a good idea I'm tweaking this shape a bit more to make it more interesting and I also want the shape to uh, that bracket there to attach to the shock so I'm going to add some more parts for that yeah sometimes my mouse disappears to the right that's me skipping a song or changing to something else don't worry about that I'm just working with simple boxes here I really don't want to lose yourself in crazy details here after all it's just a simple metal bracket needs to do its job like that turn off edge snapping so I can rotate it a little bit more precisely and that seems to look pretty good maybe a little bit slimmer Uh, you don't want to make these parts too fat also because uh, in real life they're not going to put like I don't know two inch sheet metal on these uh, these parts it's thin metal also in real life that's why I'm doing the same thing me messing around with planar uh, a little bit here also I reset X form on that thing because you can't make something planar on the world axis if its uh, local axis is misaligned. I'm creating a second copy there to make sure that shock is firmly um, firmly anchored on the brackets and turning things into the correct color. Now you can see I only have things on one side I'm probably gonna have to mirror copy them to the other side right selecting my wheels just checking out what I should do next checking some try counts to see where uh, where I'm at right so I'm just selecting these parts and quickest way to mirror them is set the axis mode to world set the transform coordinate center to the bottom mode which is aligned with your uh, coordinate system and then just use the mirror tool and mirror those bits as instances and you can see my my front end is looking interesting I mean I have this um, interesting suspension setup it's not something you see usually on other cars um, especially leaf springs at the front is a little bit of a an old way of doing things but I think it looks pretty good on this car it's definitely gonna gonna make the front end of the car interesting to look at So uh, we're seeing, I'm looking around what uh, what the next thing is I should do. The engine, that's a big one. And turns out maybe some spacing issues will, might be there at the front. And yeah, of course, I can't forget to uh, attach parts, well, not attach, to link parts together so that if I move one part, all the rest moves along. I'm testing things out here. I'm moving that part a little bit back. Since I'm not all too happy with the spacing here. I think everything could sit a little bit closer to the uh, the front grille. So I'm just moving that back. That looks better. There was a little bit too much space there at the front. So don't be afraid to to make adjustments like this to your project while you're working on it. Uh, I mean, it's important to keep an eye out for these things, for these little tweaks that can make things look better. Uh, that's why I'm always just rotating this model around and looking for things. And uh, what's next? Yeah, these lights. I'm not too happy with them. They're simple shapes. They could really be better. 
I'm um, using grow to select all of these make that a little bit flatter move them together I think the, the back end is a little bit too pointy I mean it's more of a dome shape so I'm tweaking it a little bit with scale there we go uh, and what I'm gonna do now is detach the lenses of the front lights as a separate object and uh, the reason I'm doing that is because then I can start modeling the inside and I can also uh, keep these objects on the inside under control because as you can obviously see they're protruding a little bit too far inside same with those uh, connecting brackets these connecting things with the uh, the front window uh, that's better also you, you can see I'm working with a lot of separate objects I'm just making things stick into each other that's not a problem at all since uh, pretty much no engines these days require watertight meshes uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna duplicate this entire front part like so and you might be thinking the normals are inverted there I just flip them and that's for the uh, the inside of the front light that's also a dome shape because it helps uh, reflect the light more and I'm not attaching it I'm, I'm not welding it to uh, the rest of the light over there because uh, it's gonna be easier to unwrap and select if it's a separate part so there we go might want to unhide my lenses now but I might keep them hidden for later it doesn't really matter now they're not so important um, yeah we have going on here at uh, the wheels everything at about six seven thousand polygons there it's still okay especially on block house stage it's not so important what my polygons are my wheels are at 680 uh, which seems okay also I don't think I need to be worrying about poly counts too much. This is still not the final low poly or high poly stage. So uh, things can change after this. Also, my budget for this car is somewhere around 20,000. Um, I'm saying somewhere around because this is just a free project I'm doing. I don't have any art director telling me uh, what my budget should be. So I just, I'm just going for what's fun for me. I'm keeping these meshes a little bit simpler. Uh, I'm switching a, a bit back and forth between these parts because I think uh, it's always interesting to just work on one part here, work on another part there. You might want to come back to it later, later, and then you have more to change. So yeah, optimizing these shapes a little bit, and that's better. Setting the smoothing groups on them because the unsmoothed parts were a bit of an eyesore yeah there we go just looking around a little bit I don't think we have uh, we have that much to do left on the front end one of the things we need to tackle next is um, I want to do the grill on the car. We really want to do that next, but for now, I'm just going to reduce the polygons on these uh, these front light lenses a bit more. Especially these lenses, they're simple dome-shaped parts, so you don't need too many polygons on them. Um, round objects can easily add huge numbers to your poly count, so you want to keep uh, keep a watch out for that. Yeah, they need to be a little bit flatter. And uh oh. I move these with um, edge constraint mode on. There we go. Those lenses will be reflecting parts, so I don't want to be too skimpy with geometry on them also, since uh, if I would simply create these as a, uh, a pyramid shape 
or a cone, sh a cone shape, excuse me, then the reflections really wouldn't wouldn't look too good on these parts. Yeah, that's about it. Probably duplicating that lens because, uh, well, I'm forgetting about it or I'm lazy. So there we go. Front suspension done. We tweaked uh, a couple of parts. Just looked around, tweaked a bit here and there. Just if you see something that bothers you, just go ahead and tackle it. Change it up. Um, make sure you're happy with it. And uh, oh, we'll see you in the next part of this video.